11. And uh, John Pancar here at the Italian GP. First of all, just tell me a bit about your season. Obviously a privateer, having to put a lot of funding into this through sponsors. It's probably tricky just for you to be here, never mind do what you're doing and, and getting top 10 results pretty pretty consistently. Obviously today wasn't the best, but I think you can be happy with your season. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's not easy being a privateer. Uh, just a lot of money and work, you know. Uh, but yeah, I mean, kind of happy with the season. Uh, for sure I could do much better. Uh, I think the, the biggest flaw is just uh, I can't get the starts. So I don't know. I think it's a little bit in me and a little bit in the bike. So it's hard to compete with the factory guys you know the, they have they put millions into the people and the bikes and everything so it's really hard to do to do the good start but i think the riding was really good so um, yeah i think i'm going to end up 11 this season so pretty good i was hoping top 10 but i had some bad luck with uh, with the sprocket front sprocket now is the second time that uh, i dnf because of that uh, just the stone comes in and my chain goes off so uh yeah so 11 and uh, dnf in the second moto uh, pretty good but i think i could do top five if i start there you know uh, and just on the season coming into the season did you change anything because it feels like i mean in the past you have been top 10 at times but this year i think it's more consistent is there anything you change coming into the season that's maybe made the difference or maybe just experience uh yeah for sure it's experience and just uh the goal was to to do good uh, good season and be prepared already at the beginning of the season you know because before I was always like second half of the season I started to do better results now I was already at the beginning around 10 so uh, and I feel like I get I got a, like second or two faster so uh, that helped but uh, I just couldn't figure out the, the start so uh, maybe in MXGP it's gonna be easier uh, because uh, the 450s are so strong so it's not so so important the power you know. and obviously I think you live in and traveled all these GPs from Slovenia what's yeah. that like if you could maybe it would be better for you to be based somewhere in Central Europe but obviously you were studying this year so that wasn't possible uh, yeah I mean uh, yeah. everywhere we go with the camper so only the overseas races of course we went with the plane but yeah it's uh, it's pretty far everything is like over 1000 kilometers so really? Uh, I mean, Italia is closer, but otherwise it's pretty pretty far. So, yeah, it's uh, I mean, should could be easier if I go with the plane, but uh, we just don't have the budget for it. Uh, to my father to drive alone, and I go with the plane and stuff. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it would be easier, but uh, I'm not factory. So. And you just graduated, also obviously you aren't even a full professional, really. What was it like studying? Did it take away from? trainings here or there and, and what was it like to graduate uh, not many riders choose to do that but I think it's good for the future but at the same time are you glad that that's over now so next year you can be a full pro for the first year <laughs> uh, yeah I mean uh, I was really happy to finish uh, the school because uh, it's just uh, difficult to to put two together you know uh, you have to be there in school and, uh, and then you have to st study and then uh, the motocross hurts a bit you know uh, it's hard to to be as uh, as to put 100% in the motor so uh, I'm just happy to finish it uh, for sure it's I think it's good for the future um, but yeah I just think I just need a little bit more and I can get uh, factory right but we will see in the next few seasons yeah and just on next year obviously you've got your own setup here long term how sustainable do you think that is and then short term are your is your plan the same as this year the same sort of setup but to do all mxgp or maybe just european rounds or still waiting to find out um yeah it's we have a pretty good support being private here so it's i don't know probably next year i'm gonna do the same because uh, not really any good teams offer the an offer so yeah i mean for now it's possible to do it even next few years maybe but uh, if i get all the sponsors as now because uh, you never know what can happen uh, so if i get the sponsors i think i can still manage to do it my, on my own it's pretty sustainable so 
I mean, uh, I think it's going to be a bit easier in MEGP. I mean, uh, Stock bike, I think, is okay in MEGP, yeah, whereas I mean, in MX2 you need yeah. a tune bike. Yeah, I mean, we will for sure do some things on the bike, but I don't think you have to do so much as... Wheel well, is a good example of that. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, MEGP is a lot of more experienced riders, but I think still, uh, if you see like the lap times and stuff, uh, MX2 is pretty close to them, so I think the second motor was even MX2 even faster. So uh, I I believe I can do top ten results even in MXGP uh, with good starts, of course. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we will see. I, I'm kind of looking forward to it. Uh, it's a new challenge. So and just on Slovenia heading to the motocross the nations, I would say probably the strongest team ever. Is that something you're looking forward to? And hopefully you can qualify without any hiccups with that B final. Ireland seemed to always do that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I think if uh, team and me do uh, like an average result, we're gonna be in. So, and then uh, on the, on Sunday, I think we can we try to do the best result of Slovenian MX compilations. Um, you know, we're really a small country, only two million people. So, uh, it's hard to get three good riders in uh, motocross. So. I think it's uh, the, the strongest team now, so I'm really looking forward to it and uh, it's always uh, fun to ride, you know, the atmosphere is awesome, so looking forward to it. And just the last question, you mentioned Slovenia being a small country, I'm not sure if you're into cycling and if you watch the Tour de France, Pogaccia yeah. is a beast and I think there's uh, another guy, what yeah. is it about cycling in Slovenia, is it crazy? I, I don't know, they are like crazy, like... They were, sport also. Yeah, I mean, two guys were like almost winning, like Pogacar and uh, Roglic. So, That's the Arsenal. Yeah, I mean, uh, they're really good. I don't know. If you look like overall, over almost all the sports, we almost everywhere have like at least one guy that is on top. So only two million people is uh, it's kind of crazy, you know. But uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Maybe because we are kind of uh, an underdog and then maybe we fight a little bit more, I don't know, but we have something. <laughs>